Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Rahim. Uh, in this session, we will discuss some uh, uh, practicing questions on uh, uh, law of uh, uh, refraction or uh, refractive index. And moreover, we will also discuss total internal reflection and uh, some related uh, numericals and problems. So, the first part here uh, this some practice questions. Uh, on page 145 from this book of Tom Deccan and Heather Kennett published by Hodder's Education and uh, the refractive index of a certain glass is 1.5 so n is given as 1.5 the angle of refraction of, and the angle of incidence of 30 degree calculate the angle of refraction so we have to find this r while this angle of incidence is 30 degree so this is 30 degree so sin i or oh, this is sin n sin i sin r so we have to find the r so we'll place this n here so we'll place 1.5 here as given this is 30 degrees so this is 30 sin 30 is 0.5 so this is 1.5 so we'll divide this 0.333 so this is 0.33 and we'll take this sine inverse here of this 0.33 and we'll get this 19.5 so this refractive uh, angle of reflection is refraction angle of refraction is 19.5 degree which is less than this so this angle r is always less than i so because this refractive index is high at 1.5 so greater the refractive index of the medium the more the light it bends toward the normal uh, now the critical angle when the light passes at a smaller angle of incidence from an optically dense to a less dense medium such as from glass to air uh, there is a strong refracted ray and a weak ray reflected back into the denser medium. So like this, if uh, we have this uh, much angle, so when a light enters here, it refracted here. So this is the angle of incidence because this is a denser medium, this is a lighter, so it will bend away because of lighter medium. So, but some of the light will be reflected. So, uh, in this case, uh, this is partial uh, reflection and refraction. So, strong refracted ray and a weak ray reflected back. Weak ray reflected back and a strong will refracted. See? Okay. And now, if we increase this angle, so this angle of incidence, if we increase it, so for this, some angle will at some angle this will not bend but this will bend in such a way that it becomes parallel to the surface like this this is this incident ray will move away as we, long as we increase this angle uh, incidence this will also increase so at some angle it will extend like this which is here and th at this angle this becomes refractive uh, is uh, 90 degrees so this is 90 degree for this critical angle so this becomes called critical angle and if we increase this uh, angle if we increase this incident angle more than the critical angle then no refraction occur but total internal reflection will occur so this is the phenomena of total internal reflection in a normal way, if the angle of incidence is small, some strong refraction and a weak reflection, but as the angle increases, angle increases, then this refracted ray will be parallel to the surface. And if we further increase this angle beyond the critical angle, then no refraction will occur, but all total internal reflection will occur. So, there is a strong refracted ray and a weak ray refracted back into the denser medium in a part A. In, as well as the refraction, some internal reflection occurs, increase the angle of incidence, increases the angle of refraction. Angle of incidence increases, angle of refraction also increases. Now, if the incident angle increases and corresponding angle of refraction also increases, at some point, of the angle of incidence the angle of refraction 
is equal to 90 degree this so this is 90 degree this incident angle is called a critical angle for the incidence angle for which this is 90 degree for this critical angle which is less than 90 degree is called a critical angle but refractive uh, angle is 90 degree as shown in figure part b this b afterward no refraction occurs if we further increase this incident angle then no refraction will occur no refraction occurs instead total internal refraction observed as shown in figure 3.26 like this this is total internal reflection and on a hot day the road ahead may appear to shimmer with water on a hot day the road ahead may appear to shimmer with water this is an illusion because of total internal reflection the layer of air close to the surface of the roads are hotter so the the air close to the surface of the roads are hotter the air at the surface of the road are hotter and less dense than those above and refraction of sunlight occurs when the critical angle of incidence is reached the light undergoes total internal reflection so when we have uh, larger incidence angle when we are far away from the road when we get close to it then angle of incidence become uh, uh, larger or smaller so uh, this uh, uh, internal reflection will change so resulting in a mirage so when a critical angle of incidence is reached the light undergoes total internal reflection resulting in a mirage which disappear as you move toward it when we close to that uh, uh, road where we were uh, apparently uh, looking water but this mirage disappears when we get close to it so this is actually happens in deserts areas or in hot areas or in hot summer days the critical angle is the angle of incidence which produces an angle of refraction of 90 degree total internal reflection occurs when a light rays does not cross the boundary between two media it is total reflected at the boundary so this is uh, <clears throat> place a semicircle block on a sheet of paper and draw outline like this direct an arrow like this ray of light and semicircular block and we increase the angle and we can uh, perform the total internal reflection kind of experiment with it uh, now uh, refractive index and critical angle the sign of angle between ray air in n normal so this is 90 degree which is the refractive index and this is uh, angle of incidence this is a critical angle so this is a sign i which is uh, equals to c the critical angle and this is n so sin 90 degree is basically 1 so 1 over n c sin c and n is equal to if refractive index is uh, 1.5 or 3 upon 2 then we can write it 3 upon 2 since uh, 3 upon 2 is here we can inverse it both sides so sin c is equal to 2 upon 3 and c must be and uh, this is c and we can take sin inverse of this 2 upon 3 and which is equals to 42 degree so for uh, refractive index 3 by 2 for uh, critical angle is assumed as 42 degree if we increase the in angle of incidence more than 42 degree we will get total internal reflection now put this practice the total the critical angle of a transparent medium is 32 degree calculates its refractive index so this is c is given 32 degree and n is we have to find this value n n is equal to 1 over sin c sin 90 degree which is 1 so 1 over sin c and uh, this c is given which is 32 degree so 32 degree 1 over sin 32 degree and uh, 
1 over sin 32 degree divide by sin 32 degree and we will get this 1.88 so this is 1.88 so this refractive index is very very high here 1.88 now in part 2 question number 2 the refractive index of a transparent medium is 1.7 and is given this 1.7 and work out for its critical angle we have to find this c so n is equal to 1 over sin c n is 1.5 1.5 is here sin c is here we place the sin c here 1.5 here so 1 over 1.5 sin c is here so c is equal to sin inverse 1 over 1.7 and we can find this C as a 36 degree, which is very, very important. So, in this case, the critical angle is 36 degree. Uh, now, in the next session, we will discuss multiple images in a mirror. But this critical angle uh, is very important.